All right, so good morning, everybody. Welcome to lecture eight, Mathematical Methods part two. Uh, we've been discussing uh, group theory, representation theory. So in the previous class, in the previous lecture, I talked about uh, something called the orthogonality theorem, uh, which is the following statement. And it basically says that the elements of a group, uh, each element of a, of a group can be thought of as a, uh, as, an, a, as a basis vector of some vector space. And the components of that vector are the representation labels and the corresponding matrix elements of that group element in the given in this representation label. Um, so if we if we take the sum over all the group elements, um, we get something which is we get we get an orthogonality condition between two vectors. All right now, how does this this uh, what does this tell us? Well, it tells us a couple of things. Uh, one of the statements that we can make as a result of this is the following: that this expression, this inequality, is uh, satisfied. Here, uh, you have d mu, d so mu represents mu course mu is the labels the different representations of the group. Uh, d mu is the dimensionality of that representation, and and n mu uh, is uh, the number of times that this particular representation appears. So, and it says that this this sum on the left hand side is always less than or equal to the order of the group. And so uh, now, in addition to this, we have the statement of orthogonality of characters, which you can derive from the first orthogonality theorem by taking the trace of each of these matrices. You take the trace of this matrix and the trace of the second matrix, and you get a product of the characters, because that's what the character is. The character is the trace of the matrix which is the rep, you know in in that uh, representation of the group element so now uh, i'm going to talk about the regular representation and decomposition into irreducible representations um i had said earlier that you know this this is with the optional grading uh but uh, it seems to me that it doesn't make sense to talk about irreducible representations uh, without understanding how to uh, decompose any rep particular representation into uh, the irreducible ones without knowing how to do that. So, for that, we need this something called the regular representation. So as I uh, mentioned to you, this orthogonality theorem, and let me just uh, um, make a copy of this statement. Okay. So this indicates that we can view each group element um, 
a basis vector in some vector space. Right, and what is the what would be the dimensionality of this vector space? And the dimensionality would just be the order of the group, the number of group elements. So, the regular representation is constructed by taking this idea seriously. How does this work? Well, so we say that um, assume that there exists there exists a g dimension complex vector space so that means whatever the dimension of your group is whatever the order of your group is you have a complex vector space which is uh, of that dimensionality we we'll call this v and um for this vector space we will write the basis vector as the group elements so each group element corresponds to a single basis vector in our vector space. And here I've just written N. Uh, N is the order of the group. I'm using N because uh, it, it is, if I write order of G everywhere, uh, it'll start to look ugly. So if you have any state in this vector space, and here, see, this is the ket notation, right, which uh, uh, I have. This is the ket notation, right? So if you have, um, <clears throat> if you have any state, um, if you have, so if you have any state in this vector space, okay? Um, so let some state psi in this vector space. Then psi will correspond to uh, one second. No. Then we can write uh, the state psi as a linear combination of our basis vector. Right. So this is this is just something that. Uh, is very elementary. It's just a statement that if you have a vector space, you can write any vector as a superposition of the basis vectors. Okay. Uh, now, given any of these of these group elements, right? So, given that I have this. This is my i basis vector. Okay. Now let me uh, take any group element, any of the other elements, and let's say there is a This is a this is a representation, but this is a how many this is a g order of g dimensional representation of the group. So that means this d of g is a order g times order g dimensional matrix. Right, and it's a representation. So that means if I have any two group elements, then this matrix satisfies the group multiplication property. Uh, 
and how will d of g act on psi right on any linear combination of these basis elements we can write it as d of g right now psi um what is psi psi is a order g dimensional vector right so psi is something that is an order g dimensional vector right and this is an this is a g uh, order g by order g uh, dimensional matrix so you can act on this and you will get another state in the same vector space right you will get another vector in the same vector space so now we want to understand so we haven't specified what this d of g is yet okay so so for form is is not specified we are just saying that there is some order g by order g uh dimensional matrix which has this behavior so then the question that one can ask is what is the action of this matrix on the basis vector right because if you understand the action of the matrix on the basis vector then you can write down its action on any state phi and that we can express as follows so acting with this d of g on the basis vector representing corresponding to the ith group element is another basis vector right so this is also another another basis vector corresponding to the j group element where g of j is equal to the this g times g r right so what does d of g do it do it takes g of i and uh it takes one basis vector and gives you gives you another basis vector okay now we can ask what is the action of two of these matrices so we can write this as using the using this expression we can write uh, this action as in the following way okay and then this last expression on the right hand side can be written as d of g1 g2 times g so what this tells us is that d of g1 times d of g2 is equal to d of g1 g2 which tells us that this d is a representation of the group okay i mean well we started off with this assumption but even that it is a representation of the group but uh, we don't have to assume that we only have to assume that there is some uh, representation which has this or some set of matrices which has this action and if uh, those matrices satisfy this property then they will constitute a representation of your group g okay so as an example um let's consider um we'll consider the group c2 okay now c2 what is c2 c2 is the cyclic group of order 
-hmm. it has two elements e and c right e is the identity and it only has one relationship basically that c square is equal to the identity right so you can write it as a you can write it as the set of elements 1 minus 1 with the group multiplication the ordinary multiplication or you can write it as um so it would be this times the or and the ordinary multiplication or you can write it as 0 1 with 0 the identity and addition mod 2 as your group multiplication property so what would be the regular representation what is the order of the group it's it's a it, it has two elements so these will be two by two matrices right and what are um, what will be the elements of these matrices well what is the identity element going to map to the identity element will just map to the identity matrix the only non trivial expression that we have is d of c what will d of c map us into right so what this will we can write it like this this is the second uh, matrix so what is the action of these two matrices so if i have some state phi which i'll write as a1 times e plus a2 times c as a1 a2 right then d of e acting on psi will just give me psi d of c acting on a1 a2 will um, will exchange the two elements and this is the only matrix that you can really have um, and it should satisfy this group uh, multiplication table right so whatever d of c is if i take the square of d of c i should get d of e right so the only matrix whose square is going to be this identity matrix is this of diagonal expression okay now Now, what does this what does this representation do? D of G takes any uh, of these basis vectors corresponding to a single group element and maps it to a basis vector corresponding to a different group element. Okay. Now, if I have to write this as a vector, what does this correspond to? It is all zeros except for at the i position where it's one and similarly g of j is all zeros except at the jth position where uh, we get one all the others are are zero so this is the jth index and this is in the ith index right so you have a matrix which is taking one such vector with which has all the entries zero except for one and it is mapping it to another vector which has all the entries zero except for one so what can be the form of this matrix d of g this matrix can only have the following form right 
it can in each column and each row right it can only have a single non zero element and the other ones to be zero this is the form of d of g for all g so for a, a different so this is for a particular group element for the for another group element right it will be some other combination of the zeros and ones but it will always have this form such that only one element in each row and each column is non zero and its value is 1 now it, what is the matrix for d of e the identity matrix that will always be the diagonal matrix right so we can write it as diagonal 1 1 1 1 where how many what is the dimensionality of this well it is the order of the group so there are g elements in this vector So if you take the trace of this, of the identity uh, matrix in this representation, right? What do you get? You get one plus one plus one. How many times order of G time, right? So this is equal to the order of the group. Okay, and what is this? This is the character of the identity element in this regular representation. What about trace of any other group element? Well, the trace of any other group element is going to be zero. Okay, because because imagine this you want to write down a matrix which is which has this property that only one element in each row and each column is non zero and so let's say you start from the identity matrix this one you take the elements in the first row okay and then you move right you change the position of the one somewhere over here you move it to an index which is not the first one but then what happens is that there is a one there is an element one sitting here on the diagonal which is in the same uh, position which is in the same column as this as this element that you have just moved so now what you have to do is you have to you have to move this one somewhere else right so you have to move this one somewhere else i move it here to some other column but then there is another again by the same logic there is another element one that is sitting here on the diagonal in this location so then i have to move it somewhere else so in this way what will happen is that none of the elements will remain on the diagonal okay so the end result will be something where the diagonal is all zeros 
so in this uh, in this regular representation there are two kinds of matrices one matrix is the identity matrix and the other matrix is some off diagonal matrix which has exactly one non zero element in each row and each column and none of those non zero elements are on the diagonal so the trace of this matrix will always be zero and that is the character of the group element g in this representation <clears throat> now so this is called the regular representation this is the regular representation and it is reducible what does that mean reducible means that it can be written as the direct sum of irreducible representation of whatever group that you are talking about okay and um so how uh, can we understand into what uh, irreducible representation is this is this does this representation is this representation composed of so we can understand it as follows right what do we mean what do we mean when we say that some representation is reducible so we have d of g which is the sum representation of the group g and this is reducible right by assumption and this is some irreducible representation of the same group labeled by some by some index mu okay and it has dimension d of mu all right so what does it mean when i say that d of g is reducible it means the following it means that i can in in a suitable basis in some suitable basis this matrix can be written as a block diagonal matrix so it's a block diagonal matrix what that means is i can write it as in the following way i can write it in this way right what does this mean i have these blocks right each block corresponds to some representation let's say d1 d2 and d3 like this but it can also happen that some representation occurs twice occurs more than once right so in this case if some representation is occurring twice then you have to put a number a of v which measures how many times that representation appears so as an example um we have looked at this uh, dihedral group so let's see direct sums okay one second let me try to find like the exact location 
Okay, I'll I'll just give you a brand new example. As an example of this kind of reducibility, consider two particles. of spin one half okay now these two particles of spin one half a single particle a spin one half particle it transforms under the j is equal to one half representation of the group su2 Okay, so this what is the j is equal to one half representation? Uh, remember that um, the number of states for given j, where j is the angular momentum, right? For given j, what is the number of states? Can somebody tell me? Sir, two j plus one. 2j plus 1 right so for j is equal to 1 half the number of states right so we are talking about a two dimensional representation right so each spin 1 half particle corresponds to um a two dimensional vector and each of these two dimensional vectors they transform under the action of some unitary 2 by 2 matrix that unitary 2 by 2 matrix is then going to be an element of our group su2 all right now we consider the composite system okay of the two particles now what what is the composite so if the hilbert space of each particle remember for each particle what was the hilbert space h1 half right the two dimensional complex vector space for two particles taken as a considered as a part of a single system what is what is the hilbert space going to be so space here there are there are two copies of the uh, spin one half Hilbert space. How will I write down the Hilbert space for two particles in terms of these two smaller vector spaces? Sukman? Sonali? If you don't know, you can just say I don't know. That way I don't keep waiting on any one person. If I give you two systems which have Hilbert spaces HA and HP, and I tell you to give me the Hilbert space of the composite system, what is the composite? How do I write down the composite Hilbert space? So the tensor product of Hilbert space A and B. Right. So this is just the tensor product of H half and H half, right? Right. Now H half and H half corresponds to two by two vector spaces. So what will H be? H will be a four dimensional vector space, right? So the dimension of H will be two by two. It's the product of the dimensionalities of the composite of the component Hilbert spaces. So this will be four dimensional, right? Now the basis elements, what are the basis 
basis vectors of my individual Hilbert spaces. I can write them like this, right? Zero and one. And I'll put a label A to indicate that I'm talking about one Hilbert space and the second Hilbert space, right? So I don't, I don't need to do this, but I'm just doing it for clarity, just to show you that there are two sets of these basis vectors, right? So what is the basis vectors of the composite Hilbert space? Can somebody tell me in terms of these basis vectors of the individual Hilbert spaces, how can I write the basis vector of the composite Hilbert space? Anybody other than Sukhman and Priya? Vishnu, Panchami? Uh, 0A, 0B, 0A, 1B. Right. 1A, 0B, right. 1A, 1B. Right. So this is, this is these are the basis vectors. Okay. Now, now here's the thing. This first Hilbert space, the Psi A, it was transforming under a representation of SU2, right? And Psi B, was transforming under some other representation of SU2. Okay, so let me ask, what will be the action of SU2 on the composite Hilbert space? Okay, so if I have for some element, G of SU2, right? I have D of G, D of one half G. What is this? This is some two by two matrix, right? A, B, C, D, these are four elements. This is a two dimensional representation, right? Of this group. And this is the fundamental representation. How does this how does this act on any state? Well, a state has some components uh, alpha and beta. It just rotates them to some other component, alpha prime and beta prime. Right? So I can take any group element and for that group element, I'll have a corresponding two-dimensional matrix. And it will act on any state in this manner, right? Where alpha A prime will be a linear sum of of these elements. Okay. Now, the, some of you might be a little bit confused because, well, or, well, some of you are probably have, are very confused, but hopefully some of you are not so confused and you might be thinking, this isn't this just the group element? Why am I calling this the representation of the group element? Again, remember that I can also, or the four dimensional representation of SU2, okay? In that case, my matrix would be a four by four matrix and it would correspond to the same group element. Okay, so even though in some sense, this is indeed 
the two dimensional representation but you can also say that this is indeed the group element itself okay we want to keep referring to this as a representation right to remind ourselves of the fact that representations are there are many many representations okay so now we know what the action of some group element on the, a single state is right the action on of the same group element on the on on the state of the second hilbert space will be exactly the same right because they are identical spaces now i can ask what will be the action of this on the tensor product hilbert space right so if i have a state which lives in h a and if i have a state which lives in h b okay from these two i form a tensor product state which lives in the tensor product hilbert space if i act on psi of a right this gives me another state let me call that psi prime a if i act on the state psi of b this gives me another state psi b in the second hilbert space so from this picture can you tell me how i will write down some matrix which acts on psi a tensor psi b anybody except for vishnu sukmanpreet and priya first of all psi a and psi b is how many dimensional vector panchami yeah panchami how how what is the dimensionality of this vector psi a Two. tensor psi b 2 a tensor product what will be 4 tensor product is 4 so what is the dimensionality of this vector 4 cross 4 it's a vector right vector is s yes, 4 cross 1 yeah so if you have some matrix which acts on a four dimensional vector what what have what do the dimensions of that matrix have to be Panchami, just four. Four what? It's a matrix. So how would I put it? Four cross one because it's a vector. Four cross four. Four cross four. If four. I have a matrix, okay. if I have a matrix which acts on a four-dimensional vector, it has to be a four by four matrix, right? So yes, there sir. is some there is some matrix. d of g okay which acts on this psi a tensor psi b how should i write this d of g in terms of this d half g what should it be um let's say kusum can you can you tell me what do you think will be the form of d this d of g d of g is a 4 by 4 matrix okay this is a 4 by 4 vector i'm uh, sorry this is a four four dimensional vector so can you tell me what the 
and i have to build up this this excuse me i have to build up this matrix d of g out of the smaller matrices which are these 2 by 2 matrices so kosum can you tell me can you take a guess at what the form of this matrix will be uh, sir uh, it will be 4 by 4 matrix Uh, yeah no i know of course it will be a 4 by 4 matrix but can you tell me how to express that 4 by 4 matrix in terms of the smaller 2 by 2 matrix uh, there is one very simple way of doing very obvious way of doing it sadanand do you know No sir. Pritam. If you don't know, you just say no, and I can move on to the next person instead of waiting. But if I don't hear any response from you, I will assume that you are not in the meeting, and I will remove you from the meeting. Well, Pritam is not in the meeting anyway. Never mind. Okay, Shubham, can you tell me more how to write down D of G in terms of the smaller smaller matrices? Sir, Shubham, are you there? Shubham, if I have D of G and I have D half of G, D of G is a four by four matrix. How can I build a four by four matrix out of this two by two matrix? बहुत ही सिंपल है, बहुत ही आसान है. इसमें कोई कॉम्प्लिकेशन है ही नहीं. ऑब्वियस चीज करनी है आपको. क्या है बताइए? गेस लेने को कह रहा हूँ मैं आपको. I'm telling you to take a guess. If you are wrong, don't worry. I won't make you stand outside the class with your hands in the air or anything like. Shubham is frozen. Shubham, can you take a guess or not? Okay, then I'll move on to somebody else. Arthi, please take a guess. Arthi, it's your turn. Uh, sorry, is that alpha? Uh, alpha prime a, beta prime a. मैट्रिक्स Right, this has to be a four-dimensional matrix, right? Because it has to act on a four-dimensional vector. So, starting from this two-dimensional matrix, how do I build that four-dimensional matrix? That's what I'm asking. You understand, Arthi? Yes, sir. Okay, so just take one guess on what that answer should be. Uh, Sonali, do you want to take take that guess? Multiply. Is, can we do that? So well, if you multiply, if you multiply two two dimensional matrices with with each other, what do you get? Do you get a four dimensional matrix? No, we get a two dimensional matrix. So how do I get a four dimensional matrix? I'm not sure, but. <laughs> Take just take a guess, na. That's what I'm saying. I'm not asking you to be sure. I'm just asking you to just like say whatever comes to mind. How we take squares? Uh, that. Ah, so what is the technical term for that in terms of in in linear algebra? Us, uska ek technical term hai na. It's not just like squares. Like when you say that. When I give you two matrices A and B, how can you construct a bigger matrix out of those A and B? Uh, 
right? Not getting the terms. If you have two matrices A and B, okay. There are two ways in which you can construct a matrix, bigger matrix out of them. What are the two ways? Bharti, do you know? दो तरीके हैं एक बड़ी मैट्रिक्स बनाने के वो कैसे बना सकते हैं बताइए सर इसका फोर रोज यस सर हाँ हाँ बताइए फोर बाई फोर मैट्रिक्स एंड फोर डायमेंशनल वेक्टर इट्स Four by one matrix. Four, four is row and one column. हाँ नहीं that is fine भारती. What I'm saying is कि मैं I'm giving you two matrices. I want you to make a bigger matrix. ठीक है मैं आपको दो matrix दे रहा हूँ. दो छोटी matrices दे रहा हूँ. मैं कह रहा हूँ उन दोनों को combine करके उनको जोड़ के एक बड़ा matrix बनाना है. Right? आपने कभी plasticin आपने कभी प्लास्टिसीन के साथ खेला है यू प्ले ऑल ऑफ यू प्लेड विद प्लास्टिसीन क्या होता है प्लास्टिसीन कैसे करते हैं प्लास्टिसीन में यू टेक वन स्मॉल पीस ऑफ प्लास्टिसीन एंड यू स्टिक इट टू अनदर पीस ऑफ प्लास्टिसीन एंड यू गेट अ बिगर पीस राइट या सबने खेला है ना तो इफ यू टेक टू मेट्रिस एंड यू स्टिक देम टूगेदर हाउ केन यू स्टिक देम टूगेदर देर आर टू वे दो तरीके होते हैं स्टिक करने के एड इन टू मल्टीप्लाई एक होता है एड बट कौन सा एड इसको क्या कहते हैं डायरेक्ट सम एंड डायरेक्ट प्रोडक्ट हाँ राहुल थैंक यू कौन हु राहुल यस सर ओके थैंक यू राहुल ओके थैंक यू भारती तो दिस वाज डायरेक्ट सम एंड डायरेक्ट प्रोडक्ट ना डायरेक्ट सो टेंसर टेंसर प्रोडक्ट एंड टेंसर सो If you want to build a four by four matrix out of a two by two matrix D of G, how will you do that by from D of one half G? Rahul, by doing direct product of these two matrix. You take D one half G tensor D one half G. Must acting on psi A tensor psi B. That's it. सिंपल एटलीस्ट आई थिंक इट सिंपल मतलब इफ इफ यू इफ यू आर कंफ्यूज आई आई विल अंडरस्टैंड नाउ दिस डी ऑफ जी राइट दिस फोर बाय फोर मेट्रिक्स इज अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द ग्रुप दिस इज अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ एस यू टू and it's how many dimensional this this is a four dimensional representation right right why is this a representation and i know that you all have a class but i'm going to continue until i just finish uh, make my point because otherwise we will not get anywhere what will be the product rule right product rule will be like this The product will be like this. Each of the components in the tensor product, the first component will multiply with the first component. The second component will multiply with the second component. Right. So this set of matrices, this four by four set of matrices, forms the representation of my group. right because it satisfies the group multiplication property d of g1 sorry not 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 tensor my mistake just d of g1 multiplied by d of g2 theek hai so this is a four dimensional representation so i have taken a 
टू डिमेंशनल रिप्रेजेंटेशन एंड आई बिल्ट अ फोर डिमेंशनल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ठीक है नाउ दिस फोर डिमेंशनल रिप्रेजेंटेशन डू यू थिंक इट विल बी रिड्यूसेबल और इड्यूसेबल Siddhant, can you can you tell me? Do you think this will be a reducible representation or irreducible representation? Reducible. It will be a reducible representation, right? Yes. But the question is, it will be reducible into what? Okay. so i so the way i would write it is as follows this is the notation okay uh sorry not not 2 plus 2 2 tensor 2 this is the notation for saying that i take a two dimensional representation and i tensor it with the another two dimensional representation theek okay? hai this is going to be reducible into a one dimensional representation and a three dimensional representation right both sides correspond to a four dimensional matrix right see this is a four dimensional matrix because it's a two dimensional matrix cross a uh, tensor product a two dimensional matrix right tanuja are you are you following yes sir and on the right side i have a direct sum so a direct sum means what direct sum of a one dimensional matrix right so one dimensional matrix is what it's just a single number and a three dim three dim three by three matrix a three by three matrix right what is the total dimensionality it's four right now what is the one dimensional representation of su2 the one dimensional representation of su2 corresponds to states which have zero angular momentum theek okay? hai so i will just write down the result now and i will leave the explanation for our next class so we have these basis states remember these are the basis states of our four dimensional vector space consisting of two two spin half particles theek hai from this vector space we construct we can write down the following um so actually instead of 0 and 1 it is uh more convenient to write it in terms of up and down okay so i'll just write it as up 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 down down up and down down theek hai from this i will construct a, a different set of states which look like this um up down minus down up by root 2 up down plus uh down up by root 2 up up plus down down by root 2 and up up minus down down by root 2 that is r orthogonal 
Okay, so these four states are orthogonal to each other. This state is the corresponds to the one dimensional representation of H two two, and these three these other three states. they correspond to the three dimensional representation of h2 now what is the relationship between dimensionality and and angular momentum so if i have j angular momentum what Excuse is the me, dimensionality sir. huh sir next class our next class started so please It's okay, man. Other people also take my time. I'll take somebody else's Just... time. You can complain about that. So that's it. Dimensionality is two j plus one, right? So then, if I say that dimensionality is three, what is the what is the value of j? J has to be equal to one. If the dimensionality is zero, what is the value of j? It is zero, right? So another way of saying this is as follows. i take a spin one half particle and i tensor it with another spin one half particle i can write the resulting vector space as a direct sum of a spin zero particle and a spin one particle so there will be there will be a state of zero angular momentum and there will be a state of angular momentum one which will be spanned by these elements okay i will stop with this and then in the next time we'll continue we'll we'll continue with this example and we'll see how we can get all of that from this regular representation so thank you for your patience and sorry for running late uh but uh, any anyway. okay so i'll see you all tomorrow now i'll stop the recording then